Lester F. Ward was an American botanist, paleontologist, and sociologist. He served as the first president of the American Sociological Association. Ward promoted the introduction of sociology courses into American higher education. His belief that society could be scientifically controlled was especially attractive to intellectuals during the Progressive Era. His influence in certain circles see, the social gospel was affected by his opinions regarding organized priesthoods, which he believed had been responsible for more evil than good throughout human history. Ward emphasized the importance of social forces which could be guided at a macro level by the use of intelligence to achieve conscious progress, rather than allowing evolution to take its own erratic course as proposed by William Graham Sumner and Herbert Spencer. Ward emphasized universal and comprehensive public schooling to provide the public with the knowledge a democracy needs to successfully govern itself. A collection of Ward's writings and photographs is maintained by the Special Collections Research Center of the George Washington University. The collection includes articles, diaries, correspondence, and a scrapbook. GWU's Special Collections Research Center is located in the Estelle and Melvin Gelman Library. Topic. Biography Most, if not all of what is known about Ward's early life comes from the definitive biography, Lester F. Ward, a personal sketch, written by Emily Palmer Cape in 1922, where she writes in the foreword, Cape explained later in the foreword, in a footnote on pp. 5-6, Cape notes, on February 20, 1911, in replying to my asking him to write his autobiography, he says, I don't want to write my autobiography and have it appear while I am alive. It doesn't seem the thing to do. You are the one to write my biography from all the data that I shall leave, but it will be done after I have left them. The data signified the diaries. The above italics are in Dr. Ward's letter. Topic. Early life Lester Frank Ward was born in Joliet, Illinois, the youngest of ten children born to Justus Ward and his wife Silence Rolf Ward. Justus Ward D. was of old New England colonial stock, but he wasn't rich, and farmed to earn a living. Silence Ward was the daughter of a clergyman, she was a talented perfectionist, educated and fond of literature. When Lester Frank was one year of age the family moved closer to Chicago, to a place called Cass, now known as Downers Grove, Illinois about 23 miles from Lake Michigan. The family then moved to a homestead in nearby St. Charles, Illinois where his father built a sawmill business making railroad ties. Topic. Early education. Ward first attended a formal school at St. Charles, Kane County, Illinois, in 1850 when he was nine years old. He was known as Frank Ward to his classmates and friends and showed a great enthusiasm for books and learning, liberally supplementing his education with outside reading. Four years after Ward started attending school, his parents, along with Lester and an older brother, Erastus, traveled to Iowa in a covered wagon for a new life on the frontier. Four years later, in 1858, Justus Ward unexpectedly died, and the boys returned the family to the old homestead they still owned in St. Charles. Ward's estranged mother, who lived two miles away with Ward's sister, disapproved of the move, and wanted the boys to stay in Iowa to continue their father's work. The two brothers lived together for a short period of time in the old family homestead they dubbed, Bachelor's Hall doing farm work to earn a living, and encouraged each other to pursue an education and abandon their father's life of physical labor. In late 1858 the two brothers moved to Pennsylvania at the invitation of Lester Frank's oldest brother Serenus nine years Lester Frank's senior who was starting a business making wagon wheel hubs and needed workers. The brothers saw this as an opportunity to move closer to civilization and to eventually attend college. The business failed, however, and Lester Frank, who still didn't have the money to attend college, found a job teaching in a small country school. In the summer months he worked as a farm laborer. He finally saved the money to attend college and enrolled in the Susquehanna Collegiate Institute in 1860. While he was at first self-conscious about his spotty formal education and self-learning, he soon found that his knowledge compared favorably to his classmates, and he was rapidly promoted. Topic. Marriage and Civil War Service 
It was while attending the Susquehanna Collegiate Institute that he met Elizabeth, Lizzie, Carolyn Vaught, some sources cite Vaught, and fell deeply in love. Their rather torrid love affair was documented in Ward's first journal Young Ward's Diary. They married on August 13, 1862. Almost immediately afterward, Ward enlisted in the Union Army and was sent to the Civil War front where he was wounded three times. After the end of the war he successfully petitioned for work with the federal government in Washington, D.C., where he and Lizzie then moved. Lizzie assisted him in editing a newsletter called The Iconoclast, dedicated to free thinking and attacks on organized religion. She gave birth to a son, but the child died when he was less than a year old. Lizzie died in 1872. Rosamond Azenith Simons was married to Lester F. Ward as his second wife in the year 1873. <laughs> <laughs> College After moving to Washington, Ward attended Columbian College, now the George Washington University, and graduating in 1869 with the degree of A.B. In 1871 he received the degree of LL.B., and was admitted to the bar of the Supreme Court of the District of Columbia, and that of A.M. in 1873. <laughs> Research career and U.S. Geologic Survey Ward never practiced law, however, and concentrated on his career in the federal government. Almost all of the basic research in such fields as geography, paleontology, archaeology and anthropology were concentrated in Washington, D.C., at this time in history, and a job as a federal government scientist was a prestigious and influential position. In 1883 he was made geologist of the U.S. Geological Survey. While he worked at the Geological Survey he became good friends with John Wesley Powell, the powerful and influential second director of the U.S. Geological Survey 1881 and the director of the Bureau of Ethnology at the Smithsonian Institution. <laughs> Brown University Chair of Sociology In 1892, he was named paleontologist for the USGS, a position he held until 1906, when he resigned to accept the chair of sociology at Brown University. <laughs> <laughs> Works and ideas By the early 1880s the new field of sociology had become dominated by ideologues of the left and right, both determined to claim the science of society as their own. The champion of the conservatives and businessmen was Herbert Spencer, he was opposed on the left by Karl Marx. Although Spencer and Marx disagreed about many things they were similar in that their systems were static, they both claimed to have divined the immutable stages of development that a society went through and they both taught that mankind was essentially helpless before the force of evolution. With the publication of the two-volume, 1,200-page, Dynamic Sociology, or Applied Social Sciences based upon Statical Sociology and the Less Complex Sciences 1883, Lester Ward hoped to restore the central importance of experimentation and the scientific method to the field of sociology. For Ward science wasn't cold or impersonal, it was human-centered and results-oriented. As he put it in the preface to Dynamic Sociology. The real object of science is to benefit man. A science which fails to do this, however agreeable its study, is lifeless. Sociology, which of all sciences should benefit man most, is in danger of falling into the class of polite amusements, or dead sciences. It is the object of this work to point out a method by which the breath of life may be breathed into its nostrils. Ward theorized that poverty could be minimized or eliminated by the systematic intervention of society. Mankind wasn't helpless before the impersonal force of nature and evolution. Through the power of mind, man could take control of the situation and direct the evolution of human society. This theory is known as telesis. Also see, meliorism, sociocracy and public sociology. A sociology which intelligently and scientifically directed the social and economic development of society should institute a universal and comprehensive system of education, regulate competition, connect the people together on the basis of equal opportunities and cooperation, and promote the happiness and the freedom of everyone. Topic. Criticism of laissez-faire 
Ward is most often remembered for his relentless attack on Herbert Spencer and his theories of laissez-faire and survival of the fittest that totally dominated socio-economic thought in the United States after the American Civil War. While Marx and communism, socialism didn't catch on in the United States during Ward's lifetime, Spencer became famous, he was the leading light for conservatives. Ward placed himself in direct opposition to Spencer and Spencer's American disciple, William Graham Sumner, who had become the most well-known and widely read American sociologist by single-mindedly promoting the principles of laissez-faire. To quote the historian Henry Steele Commager, Ward was the first major scholar to attack this whole system of negativist and absolutist sociology and he remains the ablest. Before Ward could begin to formulate that science of society which he hoped would inaugurate an era of such progress as the world had not yet seen, he had to destroy the superstitions that still held domain over the mind of his generation. Of these, laissez-faire was the most stupefying, and it was on the doctrine of laissez-faire that he trained his heaviest guns. The work of demolition performed in dynamic sociology, psychic factors and applied sociology was thorough. Topic. Welfare state Ward was a strong supporter of the concept of the welfare state, or state aid for those in need of it. He fiercely criticized those who criticized such policies as paternalistic, writing that the primary critics of state aid for the indigent were the wealthy classes who themselves lobbied for government assistance for their failing enterprises. The charge of paternalism is chiefly made by the class that enjoys the largest share of government protection. Those who denounce it are those who most frequently and successfully invoke it. Nothing is more obvious today than the signal inability of capital and private enterprise to take care of themselves unaided by the state, and while they are incessantly denouncing paternalism, by which they mean the claim of the defenseless laborer and artisan to a share in this lavish state protection, they are all the while besieging legislatures for relief from their own incompetency, and pleading the baby act through a trained body of lawyers and lobbyists. The dispensing of national pap to this class should rather be called maternalism, to which a square, open, and dignified paternalism would be infinitely preferable. Topic. Female equality. Ward was a strong advocate for equal rights for women and even theorized that women were naturally superior to men, much to the scorn of mainstream sociologists. In this regard, Ward presaged the rise of feminism, and especially the difference feminism of writers such as Harvard's Carol Gilligan, who have developed the claims of female superiority. Ward is now considered a feminist writer by historians such as Ann Taylor Allen. However, Clifford H. Scott claims that some suffragists ignored him. Ward's persuasion on the question of female intelligence is described by himself. And now from the point of view of intellectual development itself we find her side by side, and shoulder to shoulder with him furnishing, from the very outset, far back in prehistoric, presocial, and even prehuman times, the necessary complement to his otherwise one-sided, headlong, and wayward career, without which he would soon have warped and distorted the race and rendered it incapable of the very progress which he claims exclusively to inspire. And Herifor again, even in the realm of intellect, where he would fain reign supreme, she has proved herself fully his equal and is entitled to her share of whatever credit attaches to human progress hereby achieved. Clifford H. Scott argues that practically all the suffragists ignored him. Topic: <laughs> Environmental policy in the U.S. Ward had a considerable influence on the United States environmental policy in the late 19th and early 20th century. Ross listed Ward among the four philosopher scientists that shaped American early environmental policies. See Ross, John R. Man over Nature. Topic: White supremacy and race. Ward was a Republican Whig and supported the abolition of the American system of slavery. He enlisted in the Union Army during the Civil War and was wounded three times. However, a close reading of his dynamic sociology will uncover several statements that would be considered somewhat racist and ethnocentric by today's standards. 
There are references to the superiority of Western culture and the savagery of the American Indian and black races, made all the more jarring by the modern feel of much of the rest of the book. However, Ward lived in Washington, D.C., then the center of anthropological research in the U.S. He was always up to date on the latest findings of science and in tune with the developing zeitgeist, and by the early 20th century, perhaps influenced by W.E.B. Du Bois and German-born Franz Boas he began to focus more on the question of race. During this period his views on race were arguably more progressive and in tune with modern standards than any other white academic of the time. In the 1870s, as editor of The Iconoclast, he published the articles by Frederick Douglass and he was involved in the founding of Howard University. Later, while Charlotte Perkins Gilman and many sociologists supported the eugenics movement, he vigorously opposed it. Later Franz Boas perhaps even more strongly combated the theory of white supremacy. Topic. Lamarckianism Ward is often categorized as being a follower of Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Ward's article, Neo-Darwinism and Neo-Lamarckism, shows Ward had a sophisticated understanding of this subject. While he clearly described himself as being a neo-Lamarckian, he completely and enthusiastically accepted Darwin's findings and theories. On the other hand, he believed that, logically, there had to be a mechanism that would allow environmental factors to influence evolution faster than Darwin's rather slow evolutionary process. The modern theory of epigenetics suggests that Ward was correct on this issue, although old-school Darwinians continue to ridicule Lamarckianism. Topic. Positivism While Durkheim is usually credited for updating Comte's positivism to modern scientific and sociological standards, Ward accomplished much the same thing ten years earlier in the United States. However, Ward would be the last person to claim that his contributions were somehow unique or original to him. As Gillis J. Harp points out in The Positivist Republic, Comte's positivism found a fertile ground in the Democratic Republic of the United States, and there soon developed among the pragmatic intellectual community in New York City, which featured such thinkers as William James and Charles Sanders Peirce and, on the other hand, among the federal government scientists in Washington, D.C. like Ward a general consensus regarding positivism. Theory of war and conflict In Pure Sociology, a Treatise on the Origin and Spontaneous Development of Society, 1903, Ward theorizes that throughout human history conflict and war has been the force that is most responsible for human progress. It was through conflict that hominids gained dominance over animals. It was through conflict and war that Homo sapiens wiped out the less advanced hominid species and it was through war that the more technologically advanced races and nations expanded their territory and spread civilization. Ward sees war as a natural evolutionary process and like all natural evolutionary processes war is capricious, slow, often ineffective and shows no regard for the pain inflicted on living creatures. One of the central tenets of Ward's world view is that the artificial is superior to the natural and thus one of the central goals of applied sociology is to replace war with a system that retains the progressive elements that war has provided but without the many downsides. Topic. Influence on U.S. government policy Ward influenced a rising generation of progressive political leaders, such as Herbert Crowley. In the book Lester Ward and the Welfare State, Commager details Ward's influence and refers to him as the father of the modern welfare state. As a political approach, Ward's system became known as social liberalism, as distinguished from the classical liberalism of the 18th and 19th centuries which featured such thinkers as Adam Smith and John Stuart Mill. While classical liberalism had sought prosperity and progress through laissez-faire, Ward's American social liberalism sought to enhance social progress through direct government intervention. Ward believed that in large, complex and rapidly growing societies human freedom could only be achieved with the assistance of a strong democratic government acting in the interest of the individual. The characteristic element of Ward's thinking was his faith that government, acting on the empirical and scientifically based findings of the science of sociology, could be harnessed to create a near-utopian social order. 
Progressive thinking had a profound impact on the administrations of Presidents Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin D. Roosevelt and Lyndon B. Johnson and on the liberal wing of the modern Democratic Party. Ward's ideas were in the air but there are few direct links between his writings and the actual programs of the founders of the welfare state and the New Deal. Topic Ward's diaries All but the first of his voluminous diaries were reportedly destroyed by his wife after his death. Ward's first journal, Young Ward's Diary, a human and eager record of the years between 1860 and 1870, remains under copyright. Ward died in Washington, D.C. He is buried in Watertown, New York. Topic quotes Topic Literature Becker, Ernest. Escape from Evil. Free Press, Reissue Edition. 1985. John Chinoweth Burnham, 1956. Lester Frank Ward in American Thought. Annals of American Sociology. Washington, D.C., Public Affairs Press. Samuel Chugerman, 1939. Lester F. Ward, The American Aristotle, A Summary and Interpretation of His Sociology. Literary Licensing, LLC. ISBN 1-258-10598-5. Chris, James J. 2006. The Place of Lester Ward Among the Sociological Classics. Journal of Classical Sociology. 6 1, 5-21. Doi 10.1177/1468795x0606128.2. Commager, Henry Steele, 1950. Lester Ward and the Science of Society: The American Mind: An Interpretation of American Thought and Character Since the 1880s. Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-00046-4. Commager, Henry Steele, ed. Lester Ward and the Welfare State. New York, Bobbs Merrill, 1967. Coser, Lewis. A History of Sociological Analysis, Basic Books, New York http colon slash slash www.sociology.ccsu.edu slash adair slash American underscore trends underscore by underscore Lewis underscore Coser dot htm doms, Harry F. Lester F. Ward http colon slash slash web dot utk dot edu slash tilde hdom slash ward dot pdf Finley, Barbara. Lester Frank Ward as a Sociologist of Gender, A New Look at His Sociological Work, Gender and Society, Vol. 13, No. 2, 251-265, 1999, http colon slash slash gas dot sage pub dot com slash cgi slash content slash abstract slash 13 slash 2 slash 251 gossett, Thomas F. Race, The History of an Idea in America, pg. 160 https colon slash slash books dot google dot com slash books question mark it equals wussy to six ug o c and pg equals pp one and dq equals race colon plus the plus history plus of plus and plus idea plus in plus america and client equals opera hash v equals one page and q equals and f equals false harp gillis j positivist republic ch Five Lester F. Ward, Positivist Wig https colon slash slash books dot google dot com slash books question mark it equals eight M underscore six U nine do seven PWC and printsec equals front cover and source equals GBS underscore V two underscore summary underscore R and CAD equals O Hofstadter, Richard. Social Darwinism in American Thought, Chapter 4, Original 1944, 1955, Reprint Boston, Beacon Press, 1992, https colon slash slash books dot google dot com slash books question mark it equals tie 8 auch underscore ekc and dq equals social plus Darwinism plus in plus American plus thought and printsec equals front cover and source equals bn and hl equals n and a equals a huvesty 3 eng 6 ddw fatson dash b BQ and SA equals X and OI equals book underscore result and resnum equals 4 and CT equals result largey, Gale. Lester Ward, a global sociologist http colon slash slash www.allacademic.com slash slash meta slash p underscore emla underscore oppa underscore research underscore citation slash two slash three slash seven slash seven slash o slash pages two three seven seven oh eight slash p two three seven seven oh eight dash one dot php mers Adelheid Fusion http colon slash slash Adelheidmers.org slash a web slash fusion.pdf Perlstadt, Harry. 
Applied Sociology as Translational Research, a 150-year voyage http colon slash slash www.msu.edu slash tilde perlsted slash history underscore applied underscore sociology underscore h underscore perlstat underscore jun underscore o five dot pdf Rafferty, Edward C. Apostle of Human Progress. Lester Frank Ward and American Political Thought, 1841-1913, https colon slash slash books dot google dot com slash books question mark it equals 4q underscore 5f1 gu dash mmc and source equals gbs underscore navlinks underscore s ravich, Diane. Left Back, A Century of Failed School Reforms. Simon & Schuster. Chapter 1, The Educational Ladder https colon slash slash www.nytimes.com slash books slash first slash r slash ravage dash back dot html ross, John R. Man over nature, the origins of the conservation movement https colon slash slash journals dot ku dot edu slash index dot php slash amherstud slash article slash view slash two three four eight slash two three oh seven ross, Dorothy. The Origins of American Social Science. Cambridge University Press https colon slash slash books dot google dot com slash books question mark it equals rg four bl h six x meach and pg equals pa eighty five Seidelman, Raymond and Harfum, Edward J. Disenchanted Realists, Political Science and the American Crisis, 1884 to 1984, pg. 26 https colon slash slash books dot google com books id equals 09 zdr zuz gc and print sec equals front cover and source equals gbs underscore v2 underscore summary underscore r and cad equals zero wood clement the sociology of lester f ward https colon slash slash archive dot org slash details slash sociology of fleste o three three one seven six mbp topic selected works linked here are facsimiles of original editions which also include links to jstor conversions where available along with several alternate formats for modernized copies in PDF format, see those under external links below, which were photocopied and proofread by Ralph Schreier and are the best quality you can find on the Internet. 1882-1889 Ward, Lester F. Guide to the Flora of Washington, D.C. and Vicinity, https colon slash slash books dot google dot com. Department of the Interior, U.S. National Museum, Bulletin of the United States National Museum, Washington, Washington Printing Office, 26, 22, 363-469. Ward, Lester F. 1883. Dynamic Sociology, Volume 1. Or Applied Social Science is Based Upon Statical Sociology and the Less Complex Sciences. Volume 1 of 2. New York, D. Appleton & Co. Ward, Lester F. 1885. Sketch of Paleobotany. Department of the Interior, U.S. National Museum, Extract from the Fifth Annual Report of the Director, 1883-84. Washington, Washington Printing Office, 363-469. Ward, Lester F. 1885. Synopsis of the Flora of the Laramie Group, 6. Chicago, U.S. Geological Survey, 399-557. Ward, Lester F. 1887. Types of the Laramie Flora. Department of the Interior, U.S. National Museum, Bulletin of the United States National Museum, 37. Washington, Washington Printing Office, 363-469. 1890 1890-1899 Ward, Lester F. 1891. Neo-Darwinism and Neo-Lamarckism. Washington, Jedney and Roberts Co. Ward, Lester F. 1893. The Psychic Factors of Civilization. Boston, Din & Co., reprinted 1906 Ward, Lester F. 1895. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 2. Sociology and Cosmology. Volume 1, No. 2. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 132-145. Ward, Lester F. 1895. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 3. Sociology and Biology. Volume 1, No. 3. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 313-326. Ward, Lester F. 1895. Contributions to Social Philosophy. I.V. Sociology and Anthropology. 
Volume 1, Number 4. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 426-433. Ward, Lester F. 1896. Contributions to Social Philosophy. V. Sociology and Psychology. Volume 1, Number 5. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 618-632. Ward, Lester F. 1896. Contributions to Social Philosophy. V. The Data of Sociology. Volume 1, Number 6. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 738-752. Ward, Lester F. 1896. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 7. The Social Forces. Volume 2, No. 1. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 82-95. Ward, Lester F. 1896. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 8. The Mechanics of Society. Volume 2, No. 2. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology pp. 234-254. Ward, Lester F. 1896. Contributions to Social Philosophy. Ix. The Purpose of Sociology. Volume 2, No. 3. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 446-460. Ward, Lester F. 1897. Contributions to Social Philosophy. X. Social Genesis. Volume 2, No. 4. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 532-546. Ward, Lester F. 1897. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 11. Individual Telesis. Volume 2, No. 5. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 699-717. Ward, Lester F. 1897. Contributions to Social Philosophy. 12. Collective Telesis. Volume 2, No. 6. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 801-822. Ward, Lester F. 1897. Dynamic Sociology, Volume 2. Or Applied Social Science is Based Upon Statical Sociology and the Less Complex Sciences. Volume 2 of 2. New York, D. Appleton & Co. Ward, Lester F. 1898. Outlines of Sociology. London, The Macmillan Co. Reprinted 1913 1900-1909 Ward, Lester F. January 1902. Contemporary Sociology, IIV Part 1 of 3. American Journal of Sociology, 7 4. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. Ward, Lester F. March 1902. Contemporary Sociology, V8 Part 2 of 3. American Journal of Sociology, 7 5. Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 629-658. Ward, Lester F. May 1902. Contemporary Sociology, X-12, Part 3 of 3. American Journal of Sociology, 7. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. pp. 749-762, 1903. Pure Sociology, A Treatise on the Origin and Spontaneous Development of Society, 2625 kilobytes, pdf. Ward, Lester F. 1905. Status of the Mesozoic Floras of the United States, Volume 1. Monographs of the U.S. Geological Survey. 48, Part 1 Text. Washington, Washington Printing Office, 5-616. With the collaboration of William M. Fontaine, Arthur Bibbins, and G. R. Whelan Ward, Lester F. 1905. Status of the Mesozoic Floras of the United States, Volume 2. Monographs of the U.S. Geological Survey. 48, Part 2 Plates. Washington, Washington Printing Office, approximately 500 pp. With the collaboration of William M. Fontaine, Arthur Bibbins, and G. R. Whelan Dealey, James Q. Ward, Lester F. 1905. A Textbook of Sociology. London, The Macmillan Co. Ward, Lester F. 1906. Applied Sociology. A Treatise on the Conscious Improvement of Society by Society. New York, et al., Ginn & Co. Ward, Lester F. 1908. Social Classes in the Light of Modern Sociological Theory. Volume 13. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 617-627. 1910-1919 Ward, Lester F. 1913. 
Eugenics, Euthenics, and Eudemics. Chicago, American Journal of Sociology. pp. 737–754. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 1. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 2. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 3. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 4. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 5. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Ward, Lester F. Glimpses of the Cosmos, Vol. 6. 6 vols. New York and London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Topic see also History of Feminism Topic References Topic Further reading Topic Primary sources Commager, Henry Steele, ed., Lester Frank Ward and the Welfare State 1967, Major Writings by Ward, and Long Introduction by Commager Stern, Bernhard J. ed. Young Ward's Diary, a human and eager record of the years between 1860 and 1870 as they were lived in the vicinity of the little town of Tawanda, Pennsylvania, in the field as a rank and file soldier in the Union Army, and later in the nation's capital, by Lester Ward who became the first great sociologist this country produced 1935. Topic. Secondary sources Bannister, Robert. Sociology and Scientism, The American Quest for Objectivity, 1880–1940 pp. 13–31. Burnham, John C. Lester Frank Ward as Natural Scientist. American Quarterly 1954 6 No. 3 pp. 259–265 in JSTOR. Chugerman, Samuel. Lester F. Ward, The American Aristotle, A Summary and Interpretation of His Sociology Duke University Press, 1939. Fine, Sidney. Laissez-faire and the General Welfare State, A Study of Conflict in American Thought, 1865-1901 pp. 252-88. Muchagroso, Robert, ed. Research Guide to American Historical Biography 1988-3, Nelson, Alvin F. Lester Ward's Conception of the Nature of Science. Journal of the History of Ideas 1972-33 No. 4 pp. 633-638 in JSTOR. Scott, Clifford H. Lester Frank Ward 1976. External links Topic. Primary sources Guide to the Lester Frank Ward Collection, 1860–1913, Brown University Library Collections Guide to the Lester Frank Ward Papers, 1883–1919, Special Collections Research Center, Estelle and Melvin Gelman Library, The George Washington University Smithsonian Institution Archives. Lester Frank Ward Papers, 1882 to 1913, with related materials to circa 1965. http://collections.c.edu. Retrieved the 23rd of August 2013. Lester Ward. Search of archive.org. Internet Archive Search. Ward, Lester. HTTPS colon slash slash archive dot org slash retrieved the twenty third of August twenty thirteen. Topic Secondary Sources Ralph Schreier Lester Frank Ward Sociology Primary Resources HTTP colon slash slash www.geocities.ws slash Ralph underscore Schreier Retrieved 23 August 2013. The Sunday Review, Tawanda, Pennsylvania Short Biography A Lester Ward website Public Sociology website 
Mansfield University sociology professor Gail Largie produced a 90-minute documentary on Lester Frank Ward that was featured at the 2005 centennial of the American Sociological Association and is available upon request from the director. Works by or about Lester Frank Ward at Internet Archive Works by Lester Frank Ward at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Lester Frank Ward at Find a Grave